Hi you guys, it's me, Marcy. Nice to see you again today. I, I don't know, I was starting to do this live thing and all of a sudden I, I must have hit the wrong button and I put on a black hat and a mustache and sunglasses or something on me and it really was funny looking. So I almost left it. I thought that would, would have given you a good laugh, but eh, I decided we'd just go with the regular. Today we're going to use one of my favorite double helix glasses. It is called Iris and it, it's a lovely reductive glass and it gives a nice sheen and I thought hmm, what should we do with it and of course sculpture because of course that's what I really like to do. So we're going to do some sculpture and I thought maybe we would make a raven something a little edgier than the flowers that we've been doing all these weeks and oh I always have some things to tell you. One of the things I need to tell you is that right now, let's see, we're what, May 21st, uh, the GAS conference, that's Glass Art Society conference is going on and it is free to everybody. It's online. It started today. Look up Glass Art Society, it's probably .org. I can't remember. If somebody knows, pop it into the comment section so everybody can see. And if not, when I'm done, I'll find the link for it, but there are live demos, there are conversations, all of it is free and open to everybody. And if you haven't experienced the Glass Art Society before, it's a trip. It's really wonderful and it really opens your eyes to so much. So also please say hi and where you're from in the comments. So it gives me an idea of who's watching and I don't know, it just makes me feel good. You, you know, sometimes you need that kind of stuff. And also, I want to know, are you still at home all the time? I'm trying to figure out how long to keep doing these things, these, these Thursdays. And once everybody starts moving around, you're free and maybe we'll stop them and I'll just do them occasionally. So I don't know whether this is the last one or maybe next week, something like that. And let's see, what else do I need to tell you? Oh, one other thing. It's almost my birthday. I'm really old. But on my page, if, you, if you're feeling like you got a little bit of extra, um, I'm asking people to donate to Beads of Courage, which is one of the nonprofits that I really adore. And we're so connected as bead makers also and, and glass artists. So if you got an extra couple of bucks, I'd love for you to donate to them. Or if you've got some beads and can send them to them, that would be awesome also. Or just think good wishes or whatever. But anyhow, just thought I would mention that. And that's it. How about if we just get started? I'm gonna flip the camera around and hook us into my handy dandy little unit. Hi, you guys, I see your names coming up and thank you for your donations. I noticed that, Maria, I appreciate that. Some of you have already donated also to Beads of Courage. Okay, so I'm gonna put you in my phone holder and let's get started on a Raven using Iris Double Helix Glass and I'll show that to you in just a sec. Okay, see you in a minute. Uh, let me flip you around. Ha, there you go. So, everybody doing okay? It's been, <laughs> turning you sideways there. Here we go, I think we're close there. Let me just see, I see my hands, see my hands. We're good. Let's start this up. Oh, we're gonna wait a sec, I wanted to show you. Just so you can see it, Iris Glass from Double Helix is what I'm using, one of my favorites. If you are like me, for a while there, I found that I was hanging onto my glass and not using it. And it was kind of, I, I was thinking I needed to save it because it's expensive and I was scared I was gonna waste it or something like that was gonna happen. And I found that I just wasn't using it. And that's not good because it's just sitting there and they're gonna be coming out with other glass that's probably even better than that. So I decided to start using it and playing with it. And let me tell you, it was a smart move. So I want to encourage you to play with the glass that you have and enjoy it and practice with it. So I'm gonna show you one way that I use it. And I'm gonna show you what I do also. Hang on a 
set. I didn't have my torch on yet today. I just finished one of my online Facebook sales and so I've been doing shipping all morning and shipping is wonderful because it's part of the sale but I don't get torch time in it. That's not fun. Okay, so the first thing I do when I start on a piece of glass, if I'm sure I'm not going to use the whole thing or think that I might not, is that I take my rod and I heat it up in the back of the flame. This is just a neutral flame. See the cones right there? They are relatively sharp. Remember, that's a reduction flame. And then I sometimes even go to a little more oxidized. I don't know whether you can hear the sound of the more oxygen coming through, but um, I do that a lot. And then what I do is I heat up the very end of the rod that I'm going to be using. Just get it a little bit warm and you don't need a whole lot and just any pliers, pinchers, something. I heat it up and I just smush it a little. So it's got just a little bit of a round thing on the end. I think you can see that. And then what I do is I reduce it. And the way that I reduce it, there are different ways you can do it, but I usually just switch the oxygen on it. See how that flame has changed just a little bit? I've let it cool a tiny bit, and I just go through the flame, flip it over. Wait till you see this. And you saw, I just did it a couple of times. I hope you can see it there. I'm going to hold it underneath and hope that the light can hit it. So you see, that's the reduction I'm looking for. I've got purple and teal and gold in there. But what I've done also is, because I don't know whether you can see this over here, but I put some of my silver rods into one of my jam jars. And if I have this part taken care of, then I can see exactly what I'm reaching for when I don't keep them all sorted by exactly what they are. And I can look at the reduction in them because that's what I mostly use are reducing ones. And I can see which glass it is without having to write its name or tag it or do anything like that. Okay, so, so that's the end I don't use. Think of it like an eraser on a pencil. Now I'm gonna use this end but if I end up with extra, then I'll know immediately what I have there. And I thought we would do a raven, because ravens are kind of cool. Excuse me, I think I better move this just a touch out of the flame. There we go. Okay, so I've got a 332 rod right here. And I'm just heating up my dip and go blue. And you see it went from uh, this color to a gray color is the first stage to this whitish color. So now it is ready for me to roll. And I'm going to have it so that the bird goes across like this kind of. Not straight up and down, but kind of on a little bit of an angle because that's kind of how a lot of the birds stand. And I did a little bit of looking to see, sometimes people say, what's the difference between a raven or a crow? And as you know, I have no science background. I just like animals and birds and stuff, but I really don't know a whole lot unless I do a little bit of reading about them. And ravens are a lot larger. And if any of you guys have more information, don't forget, write it in the comments so everybody else can see too. I'm starting with the base bead here while I'm telling you about ravens. And they're a lot larger than crows and they have a different tail on the bottom. Theirs is more of a diamond shape while the crows are a little bit more even across. And they have, when they're spread out flying, I think they're the ones one of them has four feathers that kind of stick out that they call fingers and the other has five and I'm pretty sure it's the raven that has five, which is good because they're and five letters in raven and four in crow and that's a good way to remember it if I got it correct. If I got it wrong, then you remember, oh, it's the opposite of what it is. God, I'm so good at this stuff. The other thing that ravens have is across their beaks, some of their tail feathers come down onto their beaks 
farther than what crows do. So, okay, so now I better focus on melting glass instead of telling you these things I learned because Google is my friend. I'm always Googling something and telling my husband weird stuff and he just kind of rolls his eyes at me. That's okay, I don't mind, he's used to it. If you hang with me, you're gonna learn weird stuff. Or tell me weird stuff. I like hearing weird stuff also. Okay, so let's focus on this a little more. So what I'm gonna do is build this up and this out that way, kind of like that. Which means, I'm, once I get it about the thickness that I want, which is pretty close here, what I'm gonna do is warm it up just slightly and I'm gonna just barely press down on each side. So I have sides versus parts that where I know I wanna build up on. So I'm heating some glass. I'm looking to see where it's flattish and I'm gonna build up this side for the front of him. And I just added some glass there and we'll melt it in. This is 100% iris. Oh, I love that color. If you were going to get fancy, and we are not getting fancy today, well, I'm holding this on an angle, think gravity, because that's where I want the glass to go while it's cooling. Um, if you're going to get fancy, I could see using this iris on most of them, but maybe his beak and do something different on his eyes or acid etch it with regular black glass or something like that. I, I could see some of that going on also. It could be pretty cool. So I'm adding some on the back side also. You can see the angle that we're making. And I'm just melting and pushing it in. Because I want some thickness there. Isn't that easy? Just melt and smush, melt and smush. See how we're starting to get the shape? Okay, so we've got to melt that part in because you don't want all those little lines in between. You want it to look smooth. And don't forget, if your first one isn't turning out exactly right, you can take tools and push glass where you want it to go. You are the boss of this glass. If you don't like what you have there, pull it off, add more in through dots. You are in charge, not the glass. Although I know some days it feels like it's the glass that's in charge. So I am holding it on this type of angle right now. I wanted the glass to flow more towards the base bead if I had held it down this way, it might have gotten skinnier where it was warm right there. It might have pulled too much. So think about the angles and the heat, where you want the glass to go. Oh, I know what else I forgot to tell you. I've decided on two glasses, classes to teach on glass. I'm going to teach one on dragon making because I love making dragons and that will be a Saturday class and possibly an evening class sometime. It won't be too long. And I'm also going to do one on heat control. And I don't know whether any of you have seen, I've gotten into making balloon animal glass beads recently. And that is the perfect way to teach people heat control, which I think is really super, super important in glass bead making. So I'm going to have two classes, balloon animals and dragons. Both of them will be a lot of fun and they'll be a little bit of a challenge, but not too much of a challenge, enough that you still have fun too. Okay, we're getting part of the body made and we're going to go a little longer on the tail and then we're going to work on the top part too. So we added a little length. Do you see how I just heated up a little bit and added some in and melt it on? Make sure that it's where you want it. If it starts curving on you or something, you just straighten it out on your marver. So I want to go a little bit wider and higher on here. I'm just adding glass. Doesn't that look easy? So I'm heating right where I connected it. I'm looking at the color of my glass 
to see how hot it is, and that's where I turn it, depending upon where the gravity needs to go. And we're getting close. I'm gonna take my brass tool to move glass around, because remember, graphite smooths glass and brass moves glass. It's kind of an easy way to remember things. We wanna thicken things up a little bit there. And then we're gonna go into the head. We're getting the basic shape. And because I've been flattened it a little bit when I was using the brass tool, I'm just heating up one side. I'm keeping this cool one at a time. And that way you don't lose your shape too much, but you can allow this one to round up a bit and take those chill marks off. And then we can do this side once this cools down a little bit. And we're just going slowly, heating it up. And you see I still have the slightly oxygenated flame. Because that way it doesn't reduce sooner than when you want it to. Okay. So let's add on a little bit more. We're going to go up here for his head. And I'm just heating up glass, melting it on, and pushing it where I want it to go. How easy is that? Just right under the flame. And then I'm heating it in so it's nice and smooth. And I'm looking to see how hot it is as to whether if it's really hot and I want it to thicken up, I hold it straight up so it sinks down into it. Otherwise, if I wanted it skinnier, I'd hold it this direction and let it stretch out a little bit. Okay. He's got a longish body, but you know what? I think I want to add just a little bit right around uh, here, right next to the mantle. So let's add a little more into his body. Just added some glass on top. We're going to melt it in. It was awfully hot and I didn't want to lose control, so I took it out of the flame and just let it cool a little bit on its own. I'm watching the color of it. And see how you can just kind of poke it into where you want it? Again, you are the boss of this. Gosh, it's freeing when that happens. We're going to do the same on this side so we don't have that indentation. Heating up some glass. And there's that divot right there that needs a little more glass there. So we're going to heat it up nice and hot to heat in the bottom section. We're going to heat it in so it connects to the other glass. And then we're going to decide where we want gravity to go. We're going to go with this. What the heck? Don't forget to heat the bottom of the tail feathers too. So here I have a little bit of extra right here, more than I want. And I know that the wing will cover most of that, but I want to smooth it out a little bit. So I have a couple of ways of doing it. I could just heat it and heat a little bit below and then have it flow down. Or if I'm not feeling like taking the time, I can heat it a little bit and just help it down with my cooler rod of glass and smooth it that way, which is what we did. Okay. So now his body's a little fatter, which is the way I wanted it. It's got a tiny little bit of a curve this way coming in. Let's add on the head because you can see how much glass I have left, although I do have a spare rod next to me also, just in case. His head's going up here. going to build into it. We're building up his chest a little bit more. And that's pretty warm, so I'm going to let it cool a minute before I hit the back side to connect it all the way. I'm watching the color of the glass because the glass gets kind of dark where you connect it, which means one part's cooler and one part's hotter and it hasn't connected all the way. And then when you put it into the flame again, when it's all the same color, then you know that it's been connected well. Add a little bit more. I 
tend to like to, because I'm a lefty, I put the heads on this side. If you're a right-handed, you'll probably be building them in this direction. So if you see it and it looks funny to you, just think switcheroo, that's all you gotta do. Add a little bit more up here on top, we're building up to the head. And we're gonna heat that part on. I'm looking to see the color of the glass. That's always important. And then I'm gonna hold the glass in the direction that I want it to go as it's cooling to let gravity help me. And they don't have a big head, but they do have a big beak that curves down a little bit. So before I put the beak on, I think I want to make some indentations for its eyes. And we have all kinds of tools that we use. I think there's what the Peter's tweezer, and there's another one that's big and fancy. And then I've got these funny little ones. They're called bale biters that my friend Jody Ruskin makes. And she has a shop on Etsy. It's called Jody Ruskin. Um, and I just use these for making eyes on small objects. I've got the other tools, and the other tools are wonderful also. So their eyes are farther back. And I just give it a little, whoops. I got shaky hands, sorry about that. So I'm also watching the color of my glass before I squeeze. I don't want to indent too much, I just want to indent a little bit. So I let some of that color go away before I put, put them on, the indentations in. Okay, let's build a beak. And the beak comes down a tiny bit from the top of the head, but not too far down. And I, I'm making this on a little bit of an angle. So let's put a big dot of glass and we're gonna let it cool a tiny bit, push in, and then I give myself a little bit of a dot. And while that's cooling a tiny bit, I'll go back and heat the rest of them. And then I decide, do I want it to look separate? See how, let me get something to point with other than my fingers. See how you can see where it's connected? I want it to be smoother than that. So what I'm gonna do is I let it cool a little bit and then just a little bit at a time, I'm gonna heat and let the two glasses run together. So you see how that's all one color? It's run together well and I'm letting it cool. See the difference in the color there? Okay, so that one's good. Let's go to the side. I did the same thing. We're gonna do it on each side a little bit at a time because if you try to do it too quickly, and I know a lot of us get anxious to get things done, um, but if you wait and are a little bit patient, you can connect it all without losing it. Okay, there we go. So now we have that gentle slope and we're gonna pull it out. You can wait to pull it out till the very end if you're worried about it contracting because we still need to do some wings on here. In fact, why don't we do that? I think that will be easier for you. Let's add some wings. And I don't tend to be very fancy on wings. I want to indicate that they're there, but I'm not gonna go and draw in all the feathers and stuff. So the wings start pretty high up and they come down this way. So I heated up a little bit of glass and then I pulled it across and let's pull more of it. I'm just heating the glass and pulling it with a cooler rod. There we go. And this kind of ran into a little bit more into the other glass, melted in a little more than I wanted it to and I want a little more definition. So while it's still warm, you can just take your razor and this is a great time to add in a few little feathers. And I just use my razor and indicate a few little feathers. And above, they look a little bit different, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a line. And then just heat that area and add in some little feathers there too. Okay, can you see that? You'll see it more. Adding these lines in when you're using silver glass is fantastic.
because the silver glass will catch the light when you add those details in. So let's do the same thing on the other side, heating up some glass. We're almost done, you guys. And I'm looking to see where I started on the other side. I want to equal it and end in about the same place. So we came to about the same place and we can push it around if we want to push it up a little bit and down a little bit. And then we're going to heat it up and do the same thing with the razor again. And that, at the same time, if you need to move your glass around, your razor is a great way of doing it also. So I like to start with the bottom of the tail feathers first, but you can go in any direction you want. And I'm just adding a little there, and then I'm adding some definition there, keeping the rest of them warm. Then we're going to add some upper wing feathers. It needs to be warm enough. And you notice how I just am going under the flame to get it warm enough. And his bottom tail feathers are a little bit short, so I have a couple of options. I can add the rest of this, but I think I'd rather save it in case I want to add to his, um, to his beak at all. But I can heat the bottom, which is pretty thick, and I can get it a little bit warm and then just pull it out a bit. Just heated it up and pulled some. Oh, now he's got a longer tail. Amazing how that works. And remember we talked about it being a little bit more pointy than a crow. So we're gonna get him warm, but not enough to lose the tail feather definition, but enough to take off any uh, chill marks that are on his other tail, the back tail. And then I'm gonna heat the tail from the bottom and just pull with my glass a little bit to make it a little bit more pointed at the end. Okay, so now we've got to fix his beak. And I'm heating just his beak underneath the flame. We're gonna pull it out so it's a little bit thinner and then we're gonna make it a little bit pointier. So heating it up, just the beak, not his face, and I'm going from underneath and pulling. lost some of the end of this. And now you can see how we pointed his beak a little bit also. And we want to add a little dot. So maybe we'll use something else. We use another silver glass and I'm not sure which one that is, but it's a different one and hopefully it will reduce just a tiny bit differently. Let's give him an eyeball. And another eyeball. And I think we're ready to reduce. So when I reduce, first I'm going to make sure that he's been warm all over and not too cool while I'm talking. And then I'm going to let him cool off just a tiny bit and then we're going to reduce him. The way that I reduce him was just the way I showed you on the tip there. We're going to, I'm changing the oxygen. See how small this flame is? And I'm just going to run him through on each side gently towards the outside of the flame. And then I'm gonna show you what we have so far and then we're gonna let him cool a little bit. We're gonna do it again. So this is what we've gotten on the first pass and I want a little bit more. So we're gonna go back in and do a little bit more. And I'm seeing purples coming up now on the bottom. Can you see those? I hope so. We're gonna do more on this side. Bring up a little more color. It's always best to stop before you think you're done. It's easier to assess that way because a lot of times you don't know. So it looks to me like his beak has plenty of color and I think I'd like just a tiny bit more on his wings. So I'm letting him cool a little bit, and he goes back in for one more pass. And I like that color on him. So there, my friends, 
is your Raven in Iris Glass by Double Helix. Hope you had a good time. If you have any questions, write them in uh, the comment section. And don't forget, there's a wonderful silver glass group on Facebook. And um, thanks so much for joining me. I really enjoyed having you and sharing my love of glass with you. Don't forget, tell me who you are, where you're from, and take care. Hope you have a great week. Bye.